Don't you think every single aquarium needs about a hundred of those in the bottom? This aquarium right here is going to be the perfect example of a food web like I want to talk about today. Hey, it's Brock here with Uncommon Aquatics. And today I want to talk about a subject that I don't think is talked about enough in the aquarium hobby. I've talked about this a couple of times in other videos, but I want to address it from kind of a different angle today. And by the end of the video, I've got something to unbox here. It says live fish. It's not exactly live fish, but pretty close. So the way I want to talk about this is by telling a little bit of a story. And I won't even get all the details of the story correct. But the details aren't what matters here. It's the theme that matters. So I saw an amazing video, it was professionally produced, it was long, it was just really good. It felt like maybe National Geographic type of video. And the story it told was about a part of the country where the wolves were endangered or removed. And the effect that had on the entire area. So by removing the wolves, all of a sudden, a bunch of other species that had been prey for the wolves became overpopulated. And that caused a problem, which caused another problem, which led to all this different type of vegetation being eaten, and it caused erosion, and it changed the river banks, and like, it devastated this part of the country. And they were trying to figure out what was going on, and they figured it out, and they reintroduced wolves and it showed like a before and after, the, the effects. And if you said that not having enough wolves in your area would mess up the rivers, you say, well, that doesn't make any sense. But nature is so much more complicated than most of us give thought to or understand. And that metaphor is true to me about aquariums. And there's a lot of different ways people approach keeping a healthy aquarium, the way they think about keeping their aquarium healthy, and they can all work. But I kind of break it down into two categories. There's kind of like the high tech and the natural. So I talked when I set up my father fish aquarium about his method of the natural aquarium. Long before the father fish YouTube channel, there was the Wallstead method, by Diana Wallstead that was taught in her books. And it was all about making the aquarium as natural as possible. And what that means is the symbiotic relationship between everything in your aquarium. So obviously we start off with an aquarium and we know that we need water and we need fish. And you can stop right there in your mind and say, all I need is water and fish. Then you very quickly, if you start keeping aquariums, you begin to understand you also need a third inhabitant in that water. You need bacteria that processes the fish waste and your uneaten food and breaks it down and makes the water safe. And then as you advance a little further, you realize the importance of having live plants and how that affects. So now we have a symbiotic relationship between plants, fish, and bacteria within your water. And a lot of times, for a lot of people, it stops there. And that's, that's the only thing you think about that needs to be in your aquarium. So if that's how you think of your aquarium and that's where you stop, then you have to actively manage that aquarium with lots of water changes and testing your water and adding a lot of things to it. But in the natural method of aquarium keeping, you realize that you've got fish at the top, then you've got your plants. Those are macro, macro fauna and flora. And then you've got your bacteria, which is super micro. But in between there, there are a ton of other layers. So a lot of people want a cleanup crew within their aquarium, and they call that cleanup crew a catfish. Well, the catfish will eat all the uneaten food. Or a placosimus, it will eat the algae. When in reality, having a catfish or a placosimus does not clean your aquarium. 
Catfish and Placosimus are dirty fish. They actually will make a mess in your aquarium. They, you have to add food for them and they produce waste. They will make your aquarium less clean. So is it just a mistaken idea that we can have something that cleans up your aquarium for you? No, that's actually a real thing that a balanced, healthy aquarium needs a cleanup crew. But it can't be another fish of any kind. There are layers, there are so many layers in between fish and bacteria. So the next thing that a lot of people do is snails. Some people do shrimp. Those are good. They, they work inside your aquarium. So now we have four layers. We've got fish and plants, our small invertebrates like snails and shrimp. We've got bacteria. Think, all right, now I've got four layers in my aquarium. But what we want is a food web. And that food web should have about 10 layers. And really more than that, it's almost infinite. Because within the term bacteria, there's lots of types of bacteria. Even within nitrifying bacteria, there's multiple types. We need all of that. But what I'm focusing on today is the layer in between bacteria and shrimp and snails. I've done other videos talking about this. And I've got tanks that I'm about to show you demonstrating it. This includes Daphnia and Moina, which are so small you can hardly see them. Scuds, isopods, amphipods. These are microorganisms that are maybe half or a third the size of a shrimp or even smaller than that down to just a little speck. And these microorganisms do important work in your aquarium that no other cleanup crew can do. And I think by ignoring these microorganisms, not only are we missing out on the opportunity to make our aquarium more natural, make our aquarium re require less maintenance, and make our aquarium healthier, we're also missing out on the enjoyment of thinking of these creatures as pets. Especially the ones in this box. So let's open it up and I'll show you what I got. This is a bag of aquatic isopods. Isopod is a term that means same-legged, roughly translated, the, the root of the word. But an isopod has like 10 legs that all function about the same. And there are terrestrial isopods that some people keep as pets. It looks kind of like a little, not like a centipede, but it's like a little bug that crawls around and they can be incredibly beneficial to our aquariums. Now I can't just put those in here, they'll immediately be eaten. But before I try to get you footage of these or release them into the aquarium, I want to talk real quick about why they're so important. These animals actually will eat fish waste. They will eat debris. They will eat things that are, you don't even know are in there. They will eat dead leaves. And a lot of people consider these a nuisance. You'll see a lot more videos about how to get rid of scuds and isopods than you will about why you should want them. And people are concerned that these microorganisms are going to eat their plants or somehow be detrimental to the aquarium or they just don't like the look of them. I think you're missing the boat. If you watch these things, they're really entertaining on their own. And they do the work of keeping your aquarium healthy. So when you create the entire food web that goes from a big fish, might be a big fish, like some of the ones in here will eventually be huge, down to bacteria. If you complete as many layers of, as possible within that food web, then, and you have a lot of plants, you can have an aquarium that requires almost no maintenance. Right now I'm showing you some footage from other videos. This is from Phyllis... Right now I'm showing you some footage from Phillips Fishworks. 
He's got a YouTube channel where he specifically focuses just on these microfauna. He makes fantastic videos about them. He also sells the microfauna. And the isopods that I'm adding in today's video were ordered from the Phillips Fishworks website. Now I've talked about why these things are beneficial to your water quality and the food web, but another thing is, in my mind, all of the foods that we feed our fish are not an ideal food. Just like you and I can live off food from McDonald's, that doesn't make it an ideal food for us. The prepared foods are safe because they don't have the possibility of introducing disease into your aquarium. Where if you go out and you get live food, like feeder fish, and you put in here, you can introduce disease into your aquarium. But if you cultivate your own food web, scuds and isopods are the perfect food for fish like this. Now, if you can grow those in your aquarium and give them as a food source, it's very good for the health of your fish. So now we've talked in theory about what I love about microfauna. Now let's introduce them to my aquarium and I'll show you everything I've got going on with these nano tanks. So this is an example of a tank that's going to be well set up for a food web. Whereas the 220 gallon I was sitting in front of earlier is never going to be an ideal spot for a food web because of the type of fish in it and the fact that those severums are always going to eat the plants and it'll never be heavily planted enough. But in this aquarium, you can see I've got, like, there is a bristle nose, here's another bristle nose. I've actually got about four types of bristle nose in here, along with a few small fish. And then I've got kind of this rubble at the bottom. We've got some little balls and cones. I don't remember exactly what those come of. They're like gumballs and what those cones come from, but I got them in a pack from Phillips Fishworks. This came in a shrimp breeding kit. All of this stuff, like these little leaves, catapa leaves, all of this stuff is food for your microorganisms. You see, there's another little bristle nose. I'm looking for my super reds. There's a super red bristle nose. But then I've got a bunch of cherry shrimp in here. See, there's a cherry shrimp at the back. And I've got more plants that are going in here tonight. But when this fully grows out, there'll be so many hiding places that I can have layers and layers of microorganisms living in this aquarium and never have to worry about them all getting eaten by the fish. Even though these platies will reproduce and I'll end up with so many platies in here, I have to take them out. This is a perfect aquarium to build a food web in. See, there's another bristle nose. I love this aquarium. Here I have four different aquariums that are each five and a half gallons. And these are set up specifically to be microfauna breeding tanks. Now, when I set these up, I made a video about them and I made a mistake in that video where I set the tanks up and immediately added my microorganisms. And that does not work for these microorganisms. They're just like a fish. They need certain parameters to live in. And they're very hardy. They're easy to keep in an established aquarium. But these guys feed off of rotting matter, leaves that are, are decaying, and they really require biofilm and they require a cycled aquarium. So you cannot set up an aquarium and then put these guys in immediately. They have to be added to a, an aquarium that is set up for them. So in the original video, when I set these up, I did everything else right, but I should have let these run with just like a couple little micro fish in them, some guppies or something, and let them cycle for a month or so before adding all my microorganisms. Now, lesson learned, all of these are cycled. They all have shrimp in them. They all have snails in them. I've taken out the fish. This one has green water in it. 
which is intentionally full of suspended algae, essentially. I actually ordered the green water and added to this. So these tanks are going to be just for scuds and isopods at first. Once I have a healthy population of microorganisms, I'm going to change these over and have them be shrimp breeding tanks along with the microfauna. I'm going to do red, orange, yellow, and blue shrimp in these tanks. I've got a big population of cherry shrimp, Neocardina cherry shrimp, in the 55 gallon planted tank down there that will be added. Just like I was saying about these, shrimp I think are so underrated in the hobby. There's a lot of shrimp fanatics but some people really overlook how much fun it can be to have a, a micro tank with shrimp in it. There you can see these little critters swimming around. Aren't those cool? Don't you think every single aquarium needs about a hundred of those in the bottom? If they're in with fish, if you keep these guys in with fish, the fish will eat some of them and keep the population down. But they're good enough at hiding that the fish can't eat them all and they will reproduce. And if done right, you can keep a population of these guys with fish. But my intention is to breed them in these tanks. So if you just want a fish in a box and you want to change the water and feed it, there's not a thing in the world wrong with that. But if you want to step it up a notch and create natural ecosystems, I recommend going all the way through the food web. Set up a little tank like this and get some shrimp, get some scuds. They're not super cheap. I think with shipping, you might pay $40, $50 for something like this. But it can be a never-ending food source for your other fish. It can be entertainment on its own, it can make your existing aquariums healthier, and it can reduce the amount of work that you have to do to keep your aquarium clean. And for all of those reasons, I think they're worth every penny. I appreciate you taking time to watch the video, put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.